so comfy is my new chair. Oh. Gee, what did I do last week? I didn't even do much. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm just enjoying the comforts of my new chair. For I'm the one, the only. I am a hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk about wrestling. I am sorry. Um, the way to make Taco Bell taco pizza is, go is going to be delayed until Monday. Um, it was just one of those weeks where I had absolutely no clue as to what I was doing. As you can tell. Nice. Tight. I like it. Oh, except for the scruffiness. But that's okay. There's a reason why I am hobo. Wait, what's this? The Young Bucks. You know what that means? I must be reviewing an AEW show. Yes, I know, even though it's... Well, it'll be Saturday morning by the time this is up. Maybe. Um, I know even though I'm doing a wrestle, I'm doing a show on Saturday. Wednesday was just one of those days. I'm just like, no. I think Wednesday I went to the gym. Late after AEW and said, screw it, I'll do the show. I have, I have my notes. And I'll get to that. And I have a lot to get to. And then I said, you know what, I'll do it Saturday. Because I had Dr. Tom and Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo was here eyeing my tequila. But I was in the kitchen in the bar making sure he didn't get anything. Dr. Tom just shows up and says, give me your good beer. And I'm like, okay. But yeah, so they made their predictions uh, this morning or yesterday. Whenever, whenever they did it, I have no idea anymore. I am so lost in time in the time space continuum. It's not even funny. There we go. I adjusted my screen so my camera is going to be off for at least this segment. And over there you can see the door of wrestling. Hopefully they like us added to. And then next week we have a major announcement. I hope. Enough about that. Let me get to the thank yous for at least the AEW segment. Dark Order 2000, Dark Order 2020. You, sir, have earned that six count. Six. 
Anakin Skywalker. Whoa. Um, you, sir, not only are a master of the Force, but a master of the air guitar. Godless spirit, exactly what this world needs. You, sir, are just there listening to your briefcase boombox. Waste you too. You, sir, can crawl out of here. And see him, Spunky. You, sir, always win by dirty pin. Wait a second. I do have a major announcement. Fife Dog, you have been promoted to the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League. Um, we can look forward to seeing F Fife Dog at the, I think, Trunk Massive. I think, I think that's what I called it. Or, or the Eve of Drunkness. One of the two. Well, I, forget, I forget what I call it. But Christmas Eve, the Christmas Eve Daytona Beach Bomb Fight League show. We will see Fife Dog show up in all his glory. Hint, he's gonna look like Rick Steiner. I've, I'm out of, I'm getting out of ideas. I do have to. I don't know, one day I'll like edit stuff. Jeez, I have a lot to do. Oh sure, I do have a lot to do. Let's see here. Oh man. Well, maybe I could do it. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't. Shoot. Yeah, I'm going crazy next week. I'll get into next week, probably Monday, because next it's going to be chaos. But you want to talk about chaos? Let's talk about some AEW wrestling. It starts off with Young Bucks versus the Hybrid 2 of Jack Evans. Wait, that's the Bullet Club? No. Um, Jack Evans and Angelico. That was pretty good. Uh, starts off, they just, Young Bucks starts posing. Uh, Angelico and Jack Evans. Jack Evans still is one of the greatest talkers in the ring. He must, oh, so comfy in this chair. And I'm not sinking down. I'm just actually leaning back. I'm enjoying the new plush office chair. I almost feel like an executive. Feels weird. But wait, I, I got lost there for a moment. Um, 
so yeah, they pull uh, T, uh, Jack Evans and then Helico pull the Young Bucks off the ring. The Young Bucks, uh, uh, they, they get their they get their like quick comeback. They start diving in tandem. Um, and Helico eats a Mex he ex eats a couple of Mexican arm drags, which is fairly impressive. Then a slingshot leg drop by I think it was Matt Jackson. I always got the two confused. They normally call him Balding Buck. I, I pull a Jim Cornette. I call him Balding Buck. And and Road Warrior Buck, I think Matt Jackson did that. I I might be wrong though. I can't tell. Um, and Helico eventually sets off uh, the Young Bucks. So that was pretty cool. And Helico, um, they did the THQ stomp, which is always good in the corner. Then there was the assisted standing 450. I'll tell you what that looks great. Although that should be a finisher. And I'll, I'll get to my thoughts about this. Then it just turns into a kick party. They kick each other. Road Warrior Buck again comes in. He's it's, it's just it's just Road Warrior Buck time. That's literally like what my notes say. Uh, Nick, he does a spike face buster. Oh, shit, that looked like it really hurt though too. Um, then you have Angelico uh, kicks out. Of the double team move, that was that was a that was okay. Uh, then there were some roll ups. Uh, Jack Evan eventually <laughs> he kind of hulks it up. It's pretty cool. Um, then there was a doomsday device to the ramp by the Young Bucks. That should have ended the match, but no, it didn't. Um, no more bang for your buck. Evan got out of that. Into like like a prison thing, whatever he called it. Uh, and Helico over a knee, knee to the back of the head. That just looks vicious. You get hit in the back of the head by anything. I don't care if it's a forearm. Knees actually look worse. Um, he goes for the pin. Uh, he tries to pin Nick Jackson. Broken up by Matt Jackson. He tries to pin Balding Buck. And I guess broken up by Road Warrior Buck. There was no Meltzer. Um, then everyone to the outside in the ring. It was a super kick party and, and then a BTE trigger. Um, I don't know. The thing I didn't mention is that there were so many big moves. Like high flying moves. It's way too many kickouts. That just makes the match feel long. It gives it that spot fest feel. They're not really showcasing wrestling. Just showcasing, hey, watch me flip off of stuff. I don't know. I'm I'm slowly becoming not a fan of it. I'm still a huge fan of Jack Evans. Jack Evans is still, next to Kevin Owens, is probably one of the best in-ring talkers ever. It was good. It just wasn't... I don't know. If, if I start seeing this again, though, I'm going to begin to downgrade Young Buck matches. But for now... It's a cheeseburger of a match. Then we got into some promo time only because I didn't have that much space to film with notes. I figured I'm not going to overrun to the next page. So these promos uh, kind of go interchangeable. Um, Darby Allen, um, he does that uh, psychological test. It's the, I know there's a fancy name to it, I forget. But it's when they blot two things together and they say, well, what does this look, what is, what does this image look like? And he starts talking about wrestlers, um, a little bit about Sting. Yeah, it's okay. So Cody Rhodes promo, Sting shows up. And um, then, of course, Team Taz had to talk about Sting showing up. Hangman, probably the best, seg, back, best backstage segment ever. Hangman and Page is just chilling out at the bar, enjoying his whiskey. And then John Silver and his partner show up wearing cowboy hats behind the bar. He asked them, how long were you guys there? And then we we're like, seven days. Yeah. It's like John, John Silver has, he has to lay off the mountain. He really needs to cut out the Mountain Dew and coffee combo. That's just not good for him. Um, and then, of course, there was the infamous Brandy and Shaquille O'Neal segment in which Brandy threw water upon Shaquille O'Neal. And Shaquille O'Neal's just like sitting there like, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Tony. 
Yeah. Like near Dullard, Shaquille O'Neal. I don't know. And then there was a match that, that kind of irked me. And I think I downgraded it for this reason. It was the Varsity Blondes. I'm, I know it's Pillman's son and some other guy. I don't like that name. One, I'm old school. That reminds me of the Varsity Club. The Varsity Club were not jobbers. He had Mike Rotundo, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, and Rick Steiner. Eventually, they brought in Scott Steiner as like a fourth member, and they were the Varsity Club. They were awesome. Back in old school, and like NWA, WCW, it was really fuzzy back then, which it was. WCW was just starting off. Um, it wasn't big. They had the Varsity Club. It was Mike Rotundo, Dr. Death, Steve Williams. Uh, Rick Steiner, and then, of course, Rick brought his brother Scott Steiner in, into the uh, stable. So you have the varsity from there, and I'm like, you know, that's not cool. I'm not cool with that. And then um, I think one of the other people I mentioned off said, no, they're supposed to be like, like the Hollywood Blondes. And I'm like, wait a second. That's probably one of the greatest, more iconic wrestlers of all time, Stone Cold Steve Austin. You hear glass break, you're, you're just like looking for someone to kick you in the gut and give you a stunner, boy. Because that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. And Austin 316 says, I just whooped your ass. So, I understand because it's Pillman's kid, him using the blonde spark. They really weren't that blonde, the way the Hollywood blondes were. It, to me... Knowing the history of it, it just seems like a ripoff of what used to be done. And it's just like, and I think I was getting into a talk with this at someone at the gym. When they make remakes of older movies, rarely, rarely is it done well. Um, the last one I can remember that was done good was the new uh, Jack Black King Kong movie. Even though it's kind of that was that was back a couple of years. You start looking at like the remake of Total Recall, the remake of RoboCop, um, the sequel to Blade Runner. Garbage. I mean, the, the newest Ghostbuster, not the one with the kids finding the Ecto One in a barn. But with the women instead, the first 20 minutes were palpable. They were, it was actually pretty good. I'm like, okay, I like where this is going. And then I'm just like, no. 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 So, yeah, it, I guess, Jesus. I'm sounding like my boss. It is what it is. God, I hate it when she uses that phrase. It's just like the biggest cop out like that and well I'm just saying it's like no you just said it but yeah a whole other issue um it was a classic match start Pillman Jr. gets worked until the crossbody FCR they drop um drops a pretty good uh gourd buster that double team gourd buster that's always fun to see uh Dax the elbows wearing the back body drop the other guy Garrison gets the hot tag a double spear sends FCR into each other kind of the heel and miscue. Uh, Dax Hardwood hits a brain buster. Next thing I know, I, I, I look away and then they hit the shattering machine. That was it. Um, Pillman, Pillman's kid looks good. The other guy looks good. I, I just hate the name. Couldn't get over, get over that. This is a ham sandwich. And then the next match, we have 10 of the, of the Dark Order versus Dustin Rhodes. Uh, Dustin just kind of rises <laughs> and beats up the guy outside. He does eat kind of like rack maneuver. It's pretty cool. Ten, uh, decent spine buster. Uh, threw him out, threw Dustin, 
Let's need the barricade. Um, that was a weird ending. Uh, Dustin hit like a running back something. It didn't seem like his finisher. It just seemed flat. Dustin Rhodes wins. I hate to do you, I hate to do you like this, Dustin. But you know what? That match was a can of soup. Then there was Evil Uno comes out. He, he brings up Dustin's role as seven in WCW. Like, wait a second. The Varsity Blondes, uh, seven? No. No, AEW. Don't go back to those days of WCW. Let WCW be dead. Trust me. No one remembers WCW except for old hobos like Hobo Tom. Just let WCW be for a while. 20 years when no one remembers and, and I'm old and senile and, and looking at, at, at very young or chippy, chippy girls. Say, oh, I remember back in the day. Yeah, show me some of that, sweetheart. Oh. But yeah, not too soon in my memory for it. Then there was, um, so yeah, that was that was what it was, whatever. Anyway. Then we had uh, Chris Jericho and MJF. Um, Sammy and MJF, they eventually shake hands reluctantly. They're going to keep the inner circle together for a while. Yeah. Then probably the match of the night was Eddie Kingston, the Butcher and Blade taking on the Lucha Brothers and Lance Armstrong. Just starts off as, as a brawl. And was this the main event? Oh, no, this wasn't the main event. That's why. Wait, was this? Yeah, this was the main event. What was the main event? Wait a second. Let me look into my notes. Why wasn't this the main event? Oh, God, that's why. Okay. Um, this should have been the main event. Uh, Eddie Kingston, Butcher and Blade, taking the Lucha Brothers and Lance Archer. Just starts with a brawl. Pentagon gets sent through a table. We don't see from him the rest of the match. Who knows what happened? I hope Pentagon's okay, only because I know he has a match at Triple Mania for the Triple A Tag Team Belts. And I gotta wake up or get that done tomorrow, sometime. Shoot, I knew I was forgetting. I was thinking, like, oh, what am I forgetting? I'm forgetting something. I forget what. Which way did I go? Which way did I go? But then, so for the most part, it's like two on three. Butcher. It's a big cross body on Phoenix. Butcher barely gets off the ground. It's, it's kind of great to see. It's great to see someone do the fun splash. That was, that was definitely interesting. Then Archer comes in, just beats on everyone. Uh, he actually has a second rope cross body. Uh, Busher works over the leg of Archer, and, and Blade gets involved with that. And then Jake the Snake Roberts gets involved. He's a little too old to be in that ring. And we saw him in the ring versus Old Tom. Old Tom kind of like beat up Jake the Snake Roberts. Old Tom's trying to find like the, the old people to wrestle with. Yeah, yeah. Who knows who he'll face come the Battle of Christmas Eve. Ooh, the Battle of Christmas Eve. I like that one better. In fact, I'm pretty sure I could find some cool oh yeah okay i know i'm gonna we'll get to that later the battle of christmas eve battle of ce b-o-c-e indeed um phoenix has a hot tag this he does such a springboard splash i i can't even imagine like if i ever tried to do that stuff then he did the two rope Bounce, bounce, yeah, bounce, bounce, Hurricanrana. That was amazing. The bunny gets involved a little bit. Um, Archer, again, uh, he eventually Ray Phoenix eats that power bomb neckbreaker combo. Eddie Kingston, the Butch and the Blade win. Good for them. They actually need a win. This actually was a really good match. Um, Archer then beats everyone up. I'll tell you what, this, even though it sounded lackluster, was actually a surf and turf match. Yeah. 
And uh, then it goes to uh, Red Velvet gets speed up in the background. Who, who cares about her? It was Tesha Price versus Abandon. This was just another woman's squash match. Again, nothing to keep you interested about the women's AEW division. Just blah. Uh, Abandon just beats up P poor Tesha. Um, then there was that, that, that weird driver thing that she did. That was great. Ken beats Tesha up. And I think, yeah, she beats Tesha up, did that, did that driver thing. Uh, wins. It makes her look strong. Makes Tesha look like a chump. I'm still not happy about the women's AEW division. That's a can of soup. Uh, then, of course, Abandon starts to beat up poor Tesha some more. Just bang her head. That was actually pretty cool. And then Sheeta came in, whacked her right across the head with a kendo stick. I don't even know they were allowed to do that anymore. And Abandon just like, does like the Undertaker set up. Uh, and she looks fifi as everything. She actually looks utterly gorgeous without all of her makeup on. Yeah. She puts that makeup on, you're like, ugh. Makeup off. Oh my, my. Oh my. Yep. And uh, then we have a Kenny Omega promo. He's like, yeah, I went to Impact because I'm going to start collecting belts. I have this belt. I might collect myself a belt over there at Impact. Who knows? Maybe I'll go to... I have my AAA Mega Champion. I'll wear that belt to the ring. I'll go to NWA, collect another belt. I'm on a belt collection journey. And Tony Schiavone is like, I hate you, Don Callis. Son of a bitch. Then uh, in our main event... It was okay. It was Orange Cassidy versus MJF for, for, the, diamond, for the diamond ring. Uh, MJF... Starts up, he just beats up Orange Cassidy, kind of starts to humiliate him, mocks him. Um, Orange Cassidy tried the slum dog millionaire, he missed. He hit that, but missed the orange punch. Uh, stuffs Orange Cassidy's hands in the back pocket, power bombs him like a hammerlock power bomb. That's badass looking. I like that move. Um, and then again, you have. Again, definitely working over the hand of Orange Cassidy, the eye rake, the face rake. MJF, he starts to, he puts his hands in his trunks and stomps on the, on the fallen Orange Cassidy. He begins to bite the hands of Orange Cassidy. That's great. Um, MJF is such a good heel. He's loud. Again, he's another one of those very good in-ring talkers. And then, of course, you have the inner circle surrounding the ring. Orange Cassidy really doesn't want to go outside. Uh, and MJF is loud even without the mic. He can clearly make out what he's saying. He's used to projecting his voice on the Daily Center, actually, because it is an amphitheater, is really good at that. Um, Orange Cassidy then hits a, it's, it's a um, corner splash, a DDT, a diving DDT. MJF hits a shoulder breaker and the Tiger Bomb. No, it's a two count. It does a heat seeker pile drival. Should have ended the match. No. This suffers the same way that all AEW events are suffering. That they have way too many false fi false finishes. It, it, it's getting old. Uh, MJF got he got caught. He he tried he got out eddied Guerrero by Orange Cassidy, which was except for Orange Cassidy didn't do like the um, bat thump to the ground. Normally Eddie always used to hit like like the ring with a chair, toss the chair to his opponent, and just lay there. So at least the referee said, "Wait a second. I heard something. He's down here. Oh, okay. I can put one and one together. I make two. You, you're disqualified. There was no bath thump, though. So he did not get... Again, the referee can't call what he can't see. That's a, that's a lame excuse. Then if Orange Cassidy's friends show up, so this turns into like a lumberjack match. Uh, Orange Cassidy uh, punt, does the orange punch for a two count. Then a second time, he rolls out of the ring. Then it's a lumberjack fight. Miro shows up. Rex Orange Cassidy. Miro, uh, MJF wins by default. This was a good cheeseburger match.
And then Miro just decides to beat up everyone after he beats up Orange Cassidy. And that was AEW. It was an okay show. And I'm back. You can tell it's WWE time because now it's the Macho Man time. Ooh, yeah. And I forgot to mention, um, I have the results from NXT War Games. Way too much wrestling. So overall, um, El Vagabundo picked three out of the five matches. You know what? Actually, it was a fun match. That was really good, too. He got the Stone Cold lock, lock right. And he got, the, wow, he got the nap right. You know what? I'm going to bump him up to a 4 out of 5. That means he's in the head of one Hunter Hearst Helmsley. And now it's time to talk about some... Smackdown. Again, as always, I always have some thank yous to give out because Smackdown is kind of a slog of a show to go through as well. We generally wind up talking about other stuff for some reason. But so I do have some thank yous. Let's see here. Where do I leave off here? The Bean Frey Wyatt. Holy shit. You sir know what you're talking about. You best play Chuggo. Not only that, sir, but Ch but Chuggo likes the fact that Jordan has back. Oh my God, Becky! Look at her butt. I like big butts, and I cannot lie. Here, Cap Chuck, you started us at Luchador on a forklift. Bladed Mon, you sir are experiencing that Mundo madness.
And help we, you know what? Natty Superior. So those are my thank yous. Um, I'll, I will say this. SmackDown learned its lesson because it's a lot better opening match than it was last week. Last week it was Natalia versus I, it was Natalia versus someone. And I just know this match is god awful. So yeah, I wasn't happy with any of that. Um, this match at least was a little promo by the Street Profits. Uh, Dolph, Z Dolph Ziggler comes out. Hey, let's have a match. I'm gonna fight you. Oh wait, I forgot one person. Oh, I forgot a few people. Oops. Let's see here. Wow. Let's see here. Gift Skull. Let's see here. Let me go back to my list. I think about a lot of thank yous today. That's weird. So, but Gift Skulls, you respond to something that I said. I think it was about, I think it was about Ruby Riot too. If I remember correctly. So you, sir, received that OMFG moment. Well, I haven't done this one in a while. Tyree. Bala Barner, I think. You, sir, are kung fu fighting. Now I can get to some SmackDown. I kind of missed the opening. I had to figure out. I was having connection problems. I don't know, every so often my computer does hiccup with me. I'll see how this goes tomorrow. When I start the upload process. I should be able to. It should be building when I'm at work. I can come home. Go to the gym. Download it then. So I'll still, it shouldn't take too long. It's just getting late. And I'm just not even feeling it. And finally, well, I'll, I better keep that. Ooh, yep, that's the time to go to bed. Belch. So it's Montez Ford versus Dolph Ziggler. This was a fun match. For the most part, they did, they did some uh, collegian showmanship. I like that because there were things. There was a, one thing we did practice called a uh, Muhammad Ali is where you drop to a knee. It's called your, your you want to change your level very quickly. Dolph Ziggler went went for the single leg. Um, he would kind of drop down to the one knee. Montez Ford mocked him by doing that repeatedly. Wow. That that made me pop. I'm like, I haven't done the. I don't even think I could. I, I could probably do those. I'd be gassed after like ten of them though. Yeah, that was great. They showed each, showed up each other. Dolph Ziggler went for the single leg takedown, classic single leg, kind of high crotch single leg on Montez Ford. They got into the ropes and then he just kicked him. That was good to see. And then he uh, did the did the rope, the rope eye rub. Oh, such a classic heel move. I'm kind of marked out for that. Dolph is also a really good trash talker. Um, Ford then came back 
for a while. Uh, he, he did his, uh, he, he warriored up. Yeah. And then it started to rain solo cups. Uh, we even come back from break. Oh, no, wait. He didn't warrior up then. He did some big move, and then solo cups started flying out of the place. Someone has to pick him up. I wonder if they make the Street Profits pick up, pick up those solo cups. I don't know. Then uh, we come back. Dolph has Ford in the sleeper hold. It's applied. Then starts dropping so many elbow drops with the exclamation elbow. Ford kind of warriors up. Just, uh, this is when he goes, ah, 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 ah. Can't go too fast. I'll, I'll, I'll break the frame rate on my camera. Um, does a standing moonsault. Then, of course, uh, Rude's on the outside. He takes out D'Angelo Williams. Um, that, of course, is enough of a distraction to Montez Ford. Montez, Dolph hits the super kick on Montez Ford. Montez Ford eats said sweet chin music. Dolph Ziggler wins. I'll tell you what. It was fun. It was a cheeseburger match. Sami Zayn's in backstage. He wants merch. He wants his own t-shirt. He wants a t-shirt that says Macho Man or, or Sami Zayn on it. I'm um, just like my very pathetic stick figure drawings and, and horrible artwork for Hobo and Girlfriend t-shirts. Where if I ever got monetized by YouTube, I could sell to you, my YouTube audience. Yes, I'd have my own merch. I can say I made it in life then. Um, so yeah, Biggie comes in. He's like, yeah, I have merch. Uh, we come back. Sami Zayn's just like talking in the ring, like cold. Like, whoa. At least he's giving the audience, and I don't even know if you pay for it, but at least he's giving the audience on the TV screens. Oh, they moved locations. They're not in the trough. Probably because the Amway Center, I think, is beginning to host basketball games. <laughs> oh, shoot, that's right. Every time the Christmas Day game. I almost forgot about that. COVID-19 really screwed up my head. But yeah, um, so Biggie starts trash talking him. And then they have their match. Sam Hussein's talking to the TV. Biggie comes in. Biggie has a new theme music. I kind of like it. He goes in into the, into the chalk bowl, puts the chalk on his hand. Kind of, you see this, this, this white puff. I think a couple people said that as cocaine. No, so cocaine is everybody being in the bowl going. Ah, yeah. I want some of Paige's blue. Oh, wait. I shouldn't say that. That's very bad of me to say. Because Xavier Woods had some of Paige's. Oh, I shouldn't say that either. But yeah. Um, so in the <laughs> let's get to the in, in the ring action. Uh, Big E, Sami Zayn. Um, he beats up Sami Zayn. Uh, and then he just, he just goes to the rope, ropes in the corner and does a split. Very physical, striking, ma strike heavy match. Uh, Zayn hit two, had the had the double knee rope choke, which was different. I I don't think I've ever seen that before. Probably someone in the indie scene has done it. I'm sure someone's done it before. I just haven't seen it on TV, which makes it feel a little bit original. Zayn mocks Biggie. He tries he tries to do the the, the uh, hip gyration over Biggie, but no, Biggie hits three big belly to bellies, and then. He might as well have just teabagged poor Sami Zayn. If you don't know what teabag is, it's just putting a certain part of the male anatomy into someone's face while standing over them. It's kind of good, disgusting. It was a big thing to do on Halo, though. And every so often on every other video game. So it looks like Big Biggie like, went to teabag him. That was funny to see. Um, Zayn, he sells everything. Um, he sold that clothesline. He just did like some ridiculous flip. That's great. Biggie, that high cross body. That was good. Um, Sami Zayn, he does the heel injury spot with his wrist. He goes underneath the ring a la Delirious style. Referee is like at eight. You hear, see Sami Zayn pop out. At nine, he starts to stomp away at Biggie. And like right before 10, Sami Zayn gets in the ring. Biggie is stuck outside. 10, 10, the perfect 10 count um, does Sami Zayn get, and he wins by count out. I like the fact that Sami Zayn's trying to do this the easy way. It's a very heelish thing to do. It fits well with his character. 
This was a good cheeseburger match. Then Bailey tr talks trash on Bianca Belair behind her, and Bianca Belair is just standing behind her. The thing I don't like is that they're making Bianca Belair turn out to be almost like Lacey Evans, which is not good. Then there was a Roman Re Reigns recap about last week. And let's see, not too many more to go. I can at least get, take a shower and I just need some sleep. Even if I wake up tomorrow, tomorrow early, I can do that. Uh, Kevin Owens then cuts a promo. He sets up the tables, ladders, and chairs. And for some reason, I don't know what, he cut his finger on something. And you see his like, whole finger turn red. His palms like turning red. His fingers gushing blood. Kevin Owens, you need to learn to set up chairs, ta tables, ladders, and chairs more efficiently without bleeding all over the place. I think another, again, I think another comment is like, whoa, did Kevin Owens just blade his finger? Wow. Uh, Jey Uso then shows up, starts to deliver chair shots to him. Um, and then, like, Kevin Owens, like, just, like, no sells it for a little... He only sells it for a little bit. Beats up Jey Uso. Then he goes backstage. Um, well, actually, Roman Reigns comes out, and, and and then, of course, Kevin Owens saying, come out here and fight me now. And then, Rome, and then Paul's like, no, you're the tribal chief on your time, not his. Very good psychological thinking. Again, my Pauly Danger, who again managed the Samoan SWAT team. He knows what he's talking about. Um, backstage. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Kevin Holmes' face is all messed up. Or he just said, or he just took that hand and just, oh. And he got like blood on his face, a big mouse under his eye. I don't know. Then Roman Reigns jumps him and says, yeah. And then he does the promise to the camera. It's like, hey. Yeah, your daddy's not the head of the table. I'm the one who's going to put food on your table. That was pretty cool and badass. I like that. Um, and then they had a women's tag team match. They had the Riot Squad come out. And by the way, Ruby Riot looks freaking hot as anything with that short hair. I don't know what it is about her and short hair. Yeah! Arr! That works for me. Um, and she faces Billy Kay and Natalia. Billy Kay came on. I'm like, oh, please, please, please reunite them with Peyton Royce. No, it was Natalia. I'm like, oh, God, no. 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 Why us? Why us in the WWE universe? Why must we suffer so? Um, this was kind of. Like a quick, weird match. Um, there was a bot Shades of K-Kick. That looked terrible. Billy Kay has to work single or work with Peyton Royce or just stand there and talk. She is so good at talk. Again, Billy... I, listen, I will always give credit where credit is due. Billy Kay is one of the best ring talkers in a long time. I mean, she's up there with the Kevin Owens, the Jack Evans. Um, the Rocket was always a good trash talker. Stone Cold Steve Austin, good trash talker. Any of the really good talkers, Billy Kay is up there. You put her with Natalia, a Walmart mom, and it just doesn't work. Um, then, of course, the Rise Squad, uh, uh, Billy Kay and Natalia, double team on, on Liv. Liv gets a hot tag. It, it's just a riot kick and, and match over. Riot Squad win in a can of suit match. Then we had Otis. Um, he was working on his blindside stuff with Chad Gable. It's a new American Alpha. The new American Alphas. Interesting. They were going to take on C uh, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. So it was Otis and Chad Gable, the new American Alphas. Cesaro taking on Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, Otis comes in. He just beats up people. He's too strong. Chad gets tag tagged in. Very classic wrestling match. Really good to see that kind of gut wrench power bomb from from a wrestling from a collegiate wrestling position near Greco Roman like. Again, you do good stuff. I will say you do good stuff. You do bad stuff. I say you do bad stuff. Chad Gale is an amazing wrestler. He has all those skills. Um, again, he, he then tags Otis. 
He's the powerhouse. They're doing fast tag thing in and out. That's really good. Um, Chad eats. Oh, however, Chad Gable eats a European uppercut and then goes downhill from there. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura misses the kicks. Otis tags back in again. Quick tags. Really smart about that. Um, hits its clothesline, a discus clothesline, a big splash in the corner. Looked like he was going to go for the caterpillar. Uh, Chad Gable said, No, tag me in. So Otis said, Yeah, I guess so. You're the coach. He tags in Chad. Um, Chad eats a Kinshasa. Uh, he gets caught in the swing. Um, eats a Kinshasa. Alpha, American Alpha version 2 lose. It was a good match, and it kind of leads to this like dark side training of Otis, where 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 you can see Chad Gable's kind of using him, and and, and kind of abusing Otis, because Otis is very much the simpleton of this tag team, and he and Chad Gable's taking advantage of that. Again, a good solid cheeseburger match though. Backstage, it's like, yeah, this was a test. You shouldn't just blindly tag me in. You should have finished him. And Otis, you failed. Not even a D minus. Straight F. No, you know what? F's too good for you. Otis, you get a D minus. I know. The two worst grades are, a, are, are, are an A minus and a D minus. Again, give me that true A, give me or give me that A or give me the F. I don't want anything in between. Um, then Baron Cor Baron Corbin introdu introduces the Knights of the Wolf, Blake and Cutter. They're just renaming the Forgotten Sons. I've I've already forgotten about them. Ugh. Now WWE did the exact opposite of what they did last week for SmackDown. Last week for SmackDown, the main event match was actually pretty good. The opening match sucked. This SmackDown, the opening match was was good. I can't complain about it. The main event match sucked. Carmella has a new entrance. She does like a very burlesque pose behind the sheet and the light, so you see the silhouette of her. Um, it's okay. Sasha Banks is still Sasha Banks. Carmella just looks like 50-year-old Florida MILF. I mean, that's all I have to say. I think I did I think I did post and a couple of people said, yeah, Corey Graves eats out Carmella's ass. They're like, yep. Um, I don't know. I think at this stage I, I wouldn't. Sasha Banks? I don't know. Bailey, no. Ruby Riot, I would. Billy Kate. Yeah. Liv Morgan. In fact, I'd like to get double teamed by the right squad. But my mind's going places where it shouldn't because it's getting late. Um, Carmella versus Sasha Banks. Uh, Carmella does the hair pull takedown into the ropes. Uh, drops on drops on top of Sasha Banks. Uh, they go to the outside. Sasha Banks hits a Meteora. Then they kind of a block of a kicks. And Sasha just, just gets, gets, goes face first into that. That always terrifies me because Sasha Banks, sometimes on the outside, takes the worst bumps ever designed or ever conceived by her. Uh, Carmella does a top rope cross body, which was pretty good. Uh, Bank, uh, Banks then gets locked in the code of silence. Then there was the near distraction with the uh, sommelier because Carmella had her champagne or her bubble. A little bit of the bubble set out. But no. Um, Carmella said something. Sasha's decided to stomp the living heck out of Carmella. Referee goes, hey, listen, one. Okay, I'll let you do a little more. Two. Okay, I'm like halfway there because it says three. Four. You know, once I get to five, I, ha I have to disqualify you. I mean, I don't want to do it, but five. I'm at five. You made me do it. I didn't want to do it. Ring the bell. Sasha Banks was disqualified. She did not let uh, Carmella get out of the ropes after a five count. We've seen this before. Um, they they brawl a little bit. Um, obviously, Carmella is searching for the right bottle of the bubbly to break over the back. Over the back, please. 
Um, stuff surface facing the ice bucket. Ooh, maybe that ice made, made Sasha Banks nipples harder. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I sh again, I need to get to sleep. I need a nap at least by the time this video goes up. Um, and then she breaks a ball across the back. Really? You're not... One, if you did break a ball across someone's back, do you know how cut up and jacked up their back would be? So you know it's fake. If it's across the head, they can at least cover up, put a towel on their head, and say, gee, that was weird. <sighs> this was a can of soup match. Um, some news and notes. Tomorrow, I'm going... Uh, Senor Hijo del Hobo El Vagabundo Dos is going to make me some turkey burger tacos. I'm going to watch and eat, probably illegally show you guys Truffle Mania because I just have to figure out how I did that last like two years ago. Yeah, like a year and a half ago. It was an amazing show. Truffle Mania is always amazing. On my laptop over here, dun 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 dun, I have my laptop. So I have those computers, two computers. I might also show you every so often. I'll be watch. I'll be um, paying attention to Impact, Final Resolution, and my camera froze up because I moved way too quick. Um, Sunday I'm off. I need to tranquilo. Next week is a busy week. I'll talk about that Monday. And then Monday, I'll also post a video on how to make Taco Bell Mexican pizzas. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And have a good night. I'm going to sleep. Bye.